Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining in. Welcome to Edureka. Now, today, guys, we'll be talking about one of the most widely used programming language that is Java programming language. So, today's session it's about the introduction to Java arrays. So, that's what we'll be doing today the introduction to the Java arrays. Now, when I talk about this Java, as you know, Java is a programming language. Talking specifically about this Java programming language, it has a significant advantage over every other programming language and the environments that are actually out there. Now, if I want to name some of the important advantages of this Java, one, obviously, it's easy to learn. And this Java was actually designed to be easy to use and obviously, hence it is easy to write, compile, debug and even learn compared to the other programming languages and another best part about this java programming languages it's an object oriented programming language and it is a platform independent programming language now because of the java's robustness ease of use platform that is my i could say cross platform capabilities and the most important security features so this java has become one of the language of choice for providing the worldwide internet solution. So that's the best part about this Java programming language. Now considering the importance of this programming language, let's see what do we cover as part of our learning agenda today. As part of our learning journey today, we'll understand what are arrays in Java. What are types of arrays? How to work with the array? How to sort in arrays in Java? And how we can apply searching in java arrays now let me talk about the structured learning that we have at edureka now edureka is known for providing the quality content to the learners and when i talk about the structured learning this is a learning journey which has been set by the industry experts to ensure that you are going to progress in the learning journey in a sequential manner so that every unit is followed by the relevant hands-on to not only help you understand the concept, but make you job ready. So if I talk about this Java certification course, the sequence learning journey would look like this. So in the module one, you'll get an introduction to Java followed by an hands on session. In module two, it's about data handling and functions. Module three, it's about object oriented programming in Java programming language. And module four, it's all about servlets. And module 5 you'll be working with packages and multi-threading which is followed by java collection and in module 7 you learn about jdbc and hibernate in module 8 and in module 9 and 10 you'll be covering spring ajax and design patterns so by covering all the units you'll be the expert in java so coming back to our agenda for today's session what are these arrays so arrays, if I want to simply say, is just a collection of multiple items. Now coming to the arrays in Java programming language. Well, when I talk about arrays in Java programming language, here, this array, it's a static data structure and it contains collection of homogeneous elements, which means it's a collection of similar types of data. Okay, for example, if I want to store the names of 100 people, then I can just create an array of the string type which can store 100 names. So always remember when I talk about array in Java programming language, it's a collection of similar types of data. And all the elements are actually stored under one variable name and it, it actually occupies a contiguous memory location. So this is a very basic definition of my Java array. Now, when it comes to types of array, so I can say that in Java array, so it can be this, like I can classify the arrays into three types. One, a single dimensional array, two, two dimensional array, and three, as a multi-dimensional array. As the name clearly suggests in the scenario of single dimensional array, it's just a collection which is a linear array. So the elements are stored in a continuous row. Now in the scenario of two dimensional array, I'll be storing the elements in the rows and columns. Coming to multidimensional array, you can think of it as a nested array where I have one array inside another array. So that is how you can think about 
the various types of my Java array. Okay, now always remember guys whenever you create a Java array. Okay, whenever you create a Java array, you'll have to mention how many number of elements or what will be the size of the array, whether it could be single, two dimensional or multi dimensional. You can specify the size once and after that you cannot change the size of the array once you have defined it. So that's one thing that you always have to remember while working with the arrays. Now let's see how we can work with these arrays. Now when it comes to working with the arrays, the first thing is how we can declare and de initialize an one dimensional array. Now if I want to declare and initialize a single dimensional array, I would say something like this. I'll say array reference variable and this is equal to I'll mention my data type and we'll have to specify the array size. Okay, so this is how we define an array. Okay, so an example can be my array is equal to new int phi. Okay, so this will take care of my declaration as well as initialization. So I'm saying this and my array which is an array. Okay, and this is equal to new int phi. It would contain phi element. So the alternative way. So the another way that you can do is so here you can also say data type and you can mention the variable name new data type and array size. So alternatively you can mention in this way as well. Okay, so this is how you can initialize an array. So here I have mentioned as my array. Okay, this is the name of my variable and I have initialized it with the values and I'm saying it as it belongs to the integer data type. Okay. Now what I have done right now is when I say int phi, it actually means that this array can store phi elements. So this array can store phi elements and these phi elements. Okay, these phi elements will actually belong to the data type of integer. Now when I say my array is equal to new int phi, so this is going to actually allocate the memory. So it will allocate the memory for me. Okay. Now once I create this array, see once I create an array, it will be like I have mentioned the size as phi. So since I have mentioned the size as phi, so I can access the individual elements like the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So these are the position of the various arrays. Okay. So the indexing 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. These are my index position. Now while working, okay, once I have defined my array, the size of the array, if I want to initialize it with some values, I can initialize some with some values by you making use of its index as well. Here I'm saying it as my array 0, 10. So this will fill the value 10 over here in the first index position. Now if I say my array 1 is equal to 20, this will fill the value 20 in this my array 1 and here I'm filling the value 30 40 50 and so on. So as a result of this so I have initialized my array with various elements and during the initialization of my array I have mentioned with the help of my index position. Okay, so this is how we can declare and initialize an one dimensional array. Now you have already seen how you can assign a value now just like we can assign a value by specifying like this that is speci specifying my array name and in the square brackets mentioning the index position in the same way if I want to access any element I can actually access it in that way as well. Okay, so I can access it in that way as well. Now here it's one more method. So this is one more method where I'm initializing the array. So what I have done is I have created an array named my array. Okay, and I have initialized it with the values inside my curly braces. The values that I'm initializing are 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50. Now if you might have observed from the previous initialization technique here, we have not specified the size of the array. So I have not specified the size of the array. I've just passed in the values. Now if I see he passed the values without mentioning the size. So the Java compiler, it will automatically specifies the size 
by counting the number of elements that I am going to have in my array. That is, in the scenario, it is five. Okay, so this is how we are going to declare and initialize a single dimensional array. All right, moving on. So to access any array, as I mentioned already, we'll mention the array name and inside the square brackets, we'll mention its index position. Okay, so we'll mention its index position to access any individual element from my array. So here, my array one, my array four. So when I say my array four, it's going to pick up the value as 40. Okay, it's actually 50 guys, not 40. And uh, so when I want to update any value, so if I want to update any value, so I can also do the same. I'll say array reference index new value. So when I say my array uh, 400, so this will be replaced with uh, 100. So so it should be actually three, not. Uh, yeah, I think this should make sense now. So my array is equal to 100. So it will be replaced with the value as 100. So this is how we work with single dimensional array. Next, let's see how we can declare and initialize a two dimensional array. Now when I talk about a two dimensional array, so to declare and initialize my two dimensional array, we are going to create it like this. So this is how we are going to create a two dimensional array and we'll have to mention the new data type and we'll mention the rows and columns. So this is this is the syntax for creation of my two dimensional array. Now here in the scenario, I'm saying it as int. Uh, I'm, I have mentioned like this and I have mentioned as my array a new int two two. It means I'm creating an array which has two rows and two columns. And this is how I'm going to create a two dimensional array guys. Okay, now when it comes to multi-dimensional array, it is just the extension of this two dimensional array. Now, when it comes to assigning the values, I'll have to mention the value by specifying the index position across rows as well as columns. Okay, so here, when we talk about any general multidimensional array, okay, so once we specify this, so here I mentioned as two and two, it means I'll have two rows and two columns, so maximum it can hold four elements, okay? Suppose if I'm creating an array with the shape as three comma two comma two, then maximum it can hold 12 elements because three into two is six, six into two is 12, okay? So this is how we are going to initialize an array. Okay, or you can say this is how we can declare an array. And then if I want to initialize with some values, then while filling the values, yes, while filling the values, we can assign the values like this with the initialized values. So likewise, I have done the filling for the other entries in this two dimensional array. As a result, this is how my array has been filled with values 100, 200, 300, and 400. And in this way, we can declare and initialize a two dimensional array. Okay, now, whenever we have a two dimensional array, if I want to access a specific array element, then we'll have to mention its index position across all the dimension. For example, if I'm interested in selecting the value 200, then I'll have to say my array zero through and column number one. So this is going to return the value of 200. And if I want to update with the new value, then it's the same procedure guys. We'll make use of assignment operator that is equality sign and we are going to assign a new value. And this is how we can replace this value 200 with 564. So the concept that you have learned just now for single dimensional array, it's generalized for two dimensional array. And this concept can be generalized for multi-dimensional arrays as well, which means it can be generalized for the arrays which has more than two dimension as well. So that's how simple it is to work with Java arrays. And when it comes to operations with arrays, so we have the addition of matrices. So this A is having three rows and three columns. B is also having three rows and three columns. 
and when we do this activity it will perform the matrix that is my element wise addition now in order to perform this element wise addition so we have created a nested for loop so this will iterate through number of rows and columns that we have on this array and here we are performing the addition okay we'll take the individual value for a and b and then we are currently performing the element wise operation so this is how we can achieve the element wise operation now similarly we can do the same activity for subtraction multiplication division and so on now this is about a simple activity of arithmetic operation now apart from that while working with the array there'll be requirement for us to sort the elements in my array now in order to sort the elements in my array so we've got various sorting algorithm now these sorting algorithms helps us in organizing my elements in my list in a specific required order now when i talk about this sorting algorithm there is various types of sorting algorithm guys so if i want to uh, say so bubble sort selection sort insertion sort quick sort okay and we also have a merge sort so these are the various types of sorting algorithms that we have in java programming language so let's look at the high level understanding as if we are implementing these kind of sorting on my java array how does the reference program would look like so let's start with bubble sort now if i want to do a basic bubble sort okay so this is how the code of my bubble sort would look like now when i say bubble sort it's actually a very simple yes it's actually a very simple sorting algorithm guys here what it actually do is it's going to work by repeatedly swapping the adjacent elements if they are actually in a wrong order okay so that's what is going to do it's going to swap the elements in it is going to swap the adjacent elements if they are present in a wrong order so since it is going to swap my each and every individual element so as a result of this this is not recommended for a very large data set now in order to do this activity there's a just a function that has been written now we can use this function as a driver function for our code so here it says void bubble sort and we have mentioned as int array and i'm getting the length of my array and after that there's a for loop that goes on between i is equal to 0 till i less than n minus 1 next there's j and j is nothing but j, j is equal to 0 j less than n minus 1 okay n minus i i minus 1 okay this is my j that i'm getting okay once i do that i'm do this checking if my array j greater than or greater than my array j plus 1 then i'm going to use a temporary variable over here and we are swapping the values for j and j plus 1 okay so this is what we'll be doing for each and every element and as you can clearly see it's a very simple approach it's a very simple approach where i'll take the elements and i'm actually going to swap the elements guys now the other kind of sorting that we have over here okay so before we do that you can if so first i'll have 4 1 10 minus 3 12 so i'll take the first elements first two and since since the condition is matching it is going to swap those two elements and it will repeat that activity it will repeat that activity for each and every scenario see it will repeat that activity now as a result of this minus three has come towards my left hand side now as a result my sorted values yes my sorted values is uh, present like this minus 3 1 4 10 12 okay next okay so at the end this is how the output would look like minus 3 1 4 10 and 12 you can clearly see that we have the values sorted in an ascending order as a result of applying this bubble sort moving on we have a selection sort now in the scenario of my selection sort here 
This is going to sort an array repeatedly finding the minimum element from the unsorted part and putting it at the beginning. Okay, it's going to find the minimum element and is going to put at at the beginning. So the algorithm it actually maintains two sub arrays in a given array the sub array which is already sorted and then the remaining array which is unsorted and that is how my selection sort algorithm is going to work and see this is the code implementation which takes care of my selection sort so with each and every iteration the minimum element from the unsorted sub array is picked and move to the sorted subarray. That is how we are going to perform this selection sorting. Next, we have the insertion sort. Okay, so if I want to show you this insertion sort over here, the code for this insertion sort goes like this. Now, when I talk about this insertion sort, it's a sorting algorithm which works similar to the way that we actually sort whenever we are playing the cards in the hands. So the array is virtually split into a sorted and an unsorted part. So the values from my unsorted parts are picked and placed at the correct position in a sorted plot in a sorted part. So just think just imagine when you're playing the game of Rummy. Okay, Rummy is the card game that I'm aware of. So if you're playing a game of Rummy, you'll get the 13 cards. Now when each player gets the 13 cards, you're going to pick each and every element in a specific order like in a random way You're going to get it Now just think about how you're going to sort those cards in the same way You will be sorting it in the scenario of this insertion sort sorting method Okay, and the next type of method sorting algorithm that we have is called as quick sort now this quick sort if I want to simplify it, so I can say this quick sort is actually a divide and conquer algorithm. Now, this is going to pick an element as a pivot and partition the given array around the picked pivot. And like if I would just simply talk about this quick sort, there's actually multiple versions of this quick sort are actually present. So if I want to simplify this, I can say like if I want to simply say okay you can like there like one way is like always pick the first element as the pivot always pick the last element as pivot and so on so there are, there are various ways so the key process is the partition guys so that's what i would say over here when it comes to the quick sort and the another sorting technique that we have is actually called as merge sort okay so much sort is also a divide and conquer algorithm guys it here it actually divides the input array into two halves the it actually calls itself for two halves and then merges the two sorted halves so that's what it's going to do in the scenario of my merge sorting and this is the, the function which describes how the merge sort can be implemented okay so this is about the sorting techniques. Now moving on, we have the searching techniques in array. When it comes to searching in array, so this Java, it actually offers various sorting algorithms. Uh, okay, let's see. Ah, so it's actually, it should be searching. Okay, so Java offers various searching algorithms. So this should be actually searching guys. Various searching algorithms that helps in finding the elements okay finding the elements of a particular list so that is what a searching in array is all about okay so when it comes to searching in array so we've got various searching algorithms which helps us in finding the elements of a list so under the searching algorithms we've got linear search and the binary search now under this linear search this is how a simple example of a linear search would look like I've created a function that's called as search okay and then I've mentioned the driving code over here so what happens in the scenario of this linear search is here it's going to start from the left element that is the leftmost element 
so it is going to start from the leftmost element of the array and one by one it is going to compare x with each element of the array suppose if my x value matches with an element then i'm going to return the index if it doesn't match with any of the elements so here i'm returning it as minus one so this is how the linear search is going to work now apart from linear search there's one more technique that's called as binary search now what happens in the scenario of this binary search is so when it comes to binary search we have got multiple steps so what we do here is first we'll begin with the mid element of the whole array as my search key now if the value of the search key is equal to the item then i'm going to return the index of the search key or if the value of the search key is less than the item in the middle of the interval then we are going to narrow the interval to the lower half otherwise otherwise i'm going to lower to the upper half and we'll repeatedly check from the second point until the value is actually found on the until until we find the value so and like we'll actually do it until we find the value or until we get the interval as empty so this is how we are going to implement this binary search algorithm and this code over here it actually describes about this binary search algorithm so now that you have learned about the important concepts related to the arrays let's look at some of the examples and the hands-on code so that you get the overall idea as how to work with java programming language now in order to work with this java programming language i've already opened my this eclipse now here we'll go ahead and we'll work with the various concepts that we have learned in our session so the first concept that we have learned so this first concept was actually on the arrays so let me see if i have any arrays over here else i'm going to show you by creating a new array so all these concepts all right now all right so let's go ahead and let's create an array itself i think that will be a let me create a new new class okay and then we are going to start working i'm going to say it as new class so i'm going to use it like this i'll specify the name as arrays so java arrays now on this new class let's see how we can create an array first now in order to create an array so in order to create an array so let me give you some more examples okay so when we talk about the arrays so we use this arrays to store the multiple values in a single variable now here under this public starting void main under this main class so i'll write it like this i'll say string okay this is the data type and i'm going to mention as i'm going to mention as employee so what we have done right now is we have actually declared a variable which actually holds an array of strings so this is an employee okay this is a variable which holds an array of strings now if i want to insert any values into it i can make use i can actually use an array literal place the values in a comma separated list or in a like which is inside my curly braces it would actually make more sense when i write it and show you guys so i'll say string okay i'll uh, write it like this i'll write as uh let's see john jacob uh jim 
okay so these are the three values that i'm storing over here so what i have done right now so i've just write, written like this okay so string employee is equal to john jacob jim okay so this is how we can we can declare a variable and we can also assign the values into it okay now if i say system dot out dot print ln okay and i'll let's say i'll print this employee and if i execute this all right uh, let me comment this out see i've got the output of this employee now if you look at it i've got the output that look like this okay now to get the better understanding if i want to access any single element i'm going to say employee and i'll write it as zero okay so this is going to return the first element over here the first element of this employee array is john Okay, so what I have done right now is I have created an array which belongs to the string data type. Now, if I want to create an array which belongs to the integer data type, then I can create in that way as well. So that's how simple it is to work with the arrays, guys. Now, let's say if I want to modify any value, if I want to modify any value, I'll say employee zero, is equal to let's say bindu so this is the new name that i'm going to specify now once this is done if i go ahead and print the output okay and if i execute my code see we have changed the elements we can we have actually changed the elements of my array and the best part is guys i can also print the length of my array if i want to print the length of the array we'll say array name and call this length and this is going to return the length of an array this has written the length of my array as three okay so this is how i can create an array now we can use the concept of multidimensional array and we can create the multidimensional array as well i'll give you a demonstration as how we can create a multidimensional array so this is a scenario of multidimensional array now if i want to create a multidimensional array this time for the demonstration purpose i'm going to create a multidimensional array as my numbers and it will have some elements that would look like this okay i'll say int and i'll mention the multidimensional arrays like this i'll call it as table is equal to and now here i'll just say one two three four comma and i'll say five six seven eight okay this is how i'm going to define my table now once this is done yes once this is done i'm going to say system dot out dot print ln and let's print the value of the table now if i execute this okay so we are getting the object at that particular index now i'll do one thing once this is done it's better i'll specify an index position okay i'll mention the index position as zero and one now if i execute this see i've got the output as two so this two is the one that is present at the zero through and the index position column of one okay now you might have a question how can i print each and every element well one way that you can do is you can create a for loop and you can loop through the array that you have if you want to iterate over each and every element that you have in your 
array that is in your Java array. Now we have learned about the sorting, right? So let's write a code for performing a bubble sort. I think that's one of the simple way and it's one of the easier one to sort it. So I'll create a new class. Okay, and I'll call this class name as bubble sort. So I've created a new class as my bubble sort. Now what I'm going to do right now is so we have this bubble sort and under this okay let me write something like this I'll say void bubble sort and I'll use the code which is present in our slides I think that should work for us. So this has uh, completed my bubble sort. Okay, now what I'll do is in order to print the array, I'm going to say one more method. I'll say print array. Okay, and I'm going to call int array like this. Now inside this, inside this, I'll write int n is equal to my length of my array. Now once this is done, I'm going to create a for loop for int i is equal to zero i less than n i plus plus oh plus plus i okay now once this is done okay I'm going to write it like this I'll say system dot out dot print array i plus I'll write it like this okay now once this is done I'm going to say system dot out dot print ln okay this is going to add a blank line now what I'll do is inside my main method yes inside my main method I'm going to add my driver method so I'll write it like this I'll say int arr okay I'll initialize it to some values let's say 65 36 29 15 25 okay 13 and 93 so this is how I'll be initializing my array next I'm going to say bubble sort. So let me call this. It's my bubble sort. Bubble sort object is equal to new bubble sort. Okay, once this is done, I'm going to say ob dot. This is actually this is the method name. I'll mention my array right now. Now after that, I'm going to say ob dot print array, and my array is this arr. I'll keep it as it is. Next, I'll execute this. Okay, bubble sort cannot be solved to a type. So we've got an error over here. Let's see. I think this should solve it. See, we have the initialized array. The arrays, original arrays are 65, 26, 29, 15, 25, 13, and 93. And if you look at the output, we have applied the sorting. So we have applied the sorting on our Java arrays. So as a result of application of sorting, we can clearly observe that the elements have been sorted in an ascending order. Okay, so with this, we come to the end of today's session. I hope you guys have enjoyed the today's session. So thank you guys 